to the presenting view controller, not the presented, the presenting, okay? You say to a view controller, dismiss view controller animated, it means dismiss any view controller that you have presented, okay? And luckily though, if you want to kind of say that in the actual view controller, there's a nice method in UI view controller called presenting view controller, which will tell you who presented you, if anyone presented you. So that's a, you can dismiss yourself basically by saying self.presentingViewController, dismiss animated. And since by definition that guy presented you, when you dismiss, it's going to dismiss you. Okay? So this is a little frowned upon because some people would argue that when a view controller, a modal view controller gets canceled, you want to unwind. Even if you're not communicating anything back, you just want to let the guy know, yeah, I got canceled. If you just cancel yourself by dismissing yourself, then the guy who presented you doesn't get notified that you uh, submitted yourself. But some people say, yeah, but if I'm canceling, I don't want that guy to know that I'm, I didn't do anything, I didn't add the contact in the contact case, so I don't even want him to know, so I'm just going to dismiss myself. So it's kind of an art of programming as to which you believe is the right thing there. It's usually not an issue because in your storyboard uh, you're wiring it up anyway, so you could always wire it up as an unwind, that cancel button, instead of having the cancel button do target action and dismiss itself. Okay? You can always just disconnect any target action that might be set up. Um, okay, uh, how does the modal view controller appear on screen? Uh, that's set by this modal transition style property in the presented view controller. And it has various choices here, like cover vertical is slide up from the bottom, like I showed in the demo there. There's also flip horizontal, which will flip the new one in horizontally. There's also cross dissolve, right, which kind of fades the new one in. And partial curl, which will curl up the current one and show the new one underneath. That one's kind of a weird one. Um, so you want to check the documentation if you want to use that curl. It puts some limitations on you. Once you curl it, you can't go modal again, for example. You can't present another one. Also, the one that curls up doesn't get view did disappear because it doesn't disappear. It kind of just cur curls up. You can't really see it behind the curl, but it's still on screen. So that's a little weird programming wise. Okay, normally a modal thing comes up and the one behind it gets completely covered so it gets view did disappear because it's view did disappear. It was completely obscured by the modal one. But with the curl, not so much. So be careful with curl. Now what about all this business on the iPad? Okay, so on the iPad again, mostly we're going to try and do popovers for this kind of stuff instead of modal view controllers. But you can do modal view controllers and you can even have a modal view controller that controls, covers the whole screen. And you determine how it works, how it covers using this modal presentation style property. It's a different property. And one of the options is full screen, not recommended on the iPad. Uh, there's page sheet and form sheet which are just different size uh, versions of the thing on the iPad. The rest of the iPad screen will be dark gray, you know, kind of grayed out like a popover's background is. And then it'll show up one's portrait size and one's a little smaller. Um, and then the current context is an interesting one. If you have a popover, if you have a view controller popover and that view controller does a modal, then if it's current context, which is the default, it'll appear inside the popover. So it'll be modal inside the popover. You see what I mean? So it's going to keep the same context as the view controller that presented it, okay? So anyway, you can look all this up for details. It's all settable in Xcode as well, these two uh, properties. All right, so that's it for modal view controllers. I'm gonna demo it, so um, you'll, you'll see it all in action. All right, different topic, UI text field. So we've seen UI text view and UI label. Okay, these are kind of two ends of the spectrum of text. UI label, non-editable, uh, you, you know, you can have attributed text in there, but it's static text can't select it or anything like that, usually one line of text. Then you got UI text view, which is almost like a text editor, okay, fully editable, all fonts and colors, everything we want. So UI text field is kind of in between those two, okay. It's a UI control, like a UI button or something like that, that you can um, set up target action from, and that target action can happen when you're done editing the text or other things that are happening in the text, and you can just, when you control drag to do it, you'll see the options you have in the little um, target action window that comes up. Uh, but it's also usually just one line of text. It's not like UI text view that has tons of things. Also, the user is usually just providing the text. They're not doing any colors or any of that attributed text business. Generally, UI text field is just 
the text and nothing but the text, okay? Um, having said that, it's got a lot of features to make it really cool for doing things like entering passwords or having a search field, all those kind of things. So it's a pretty powerful little class, but it's kind of like an editable UI label, if you want to think of it uh, that way. One thing that's interesting about a UI text field, of course, is that when you click in it, the keyboard appears. Now, we didn't really talk about how this keyboard appears when we talked about UI text view. But how does that work, that the keyboard appears? And the answer is, there's a method called become first responder that is sent, that if you send it to a text field or get sent to a text field, will cause the keyboard to appear. So this is a method you send to the text field. You can also send it to a text view. And when you do that, the keyboard will appear. And similarly, if you want the keyboard to go away, you send a message to the text field, resign first responder. The first responder means, where do keyboard presses on the keyboard go? Okay, so if you say become first responder, the text field becomes the first responder and the keyboard will appear and key presses will go to that text field. And similar to resign, it'll go away. Okay, um, there's a delegate for UI text field, unlike UI label, and there's a lot of stuff you can see there. I'll show you a brief example in the demo. Uh, for example, when the keyboard presses the return key, okay, when the return key is pressed and that text field is being added, the text field's delegate will send this message, text field should return return yes or no, whether it should send its target action, basically. Um, and in there, you can do things like resign first responder. So when the keyboard comes up, someone hits return, you can make the keyboard go away, which is usually what users expect. So we'll see that in the demo as well. But there are other delegate methods. I just want to give you an example of one of them there. There's probably about 10 of them. You can check out the documentation on that. Um, oh, here's another one, text field did end editing. That's sent to the delegate when uh, it resigns first responder. Okay, so when it stops being first responder, this message gets sent. Uh, it also has a radio station that it broadcasts on every single keystroke. Okay, so if you want to find out every single character that's typed in your text field, you can sign up to listen to this radio station and uh, you'll find out uh, what's going on. And uh, like I said, UI text field is a control so you can set up target action as well. So there's a lot of ways to find out what's going on in a text field depending on the granularity that you want. Um, the keyboard, the we don't, there's really no uh, property like give me the keyboard so that I can set properties on it. Okay? When you want to control the appearance of this keyboard, you have to send messages to the class, UI text field or UI text view, that brings the keyboard up. Okay? And those objects, those classes, will all implement this uh, pro protocol called UI text input traits. So this is a set of properties that you can set on a text field or on a text view that aren't really controlling anything about the text view or the text field. They're controlling the properties of the keyboard that they would bring up. All right. So what are some of the properties you can have? Like auto capitalization. Sometimes it's nice you have a text field. The first character you type, you want it to be capitalized. Or every word you type, separate word, you want to be capitalized. So you can set the kind of capitalization type that you have. Um, Maybe it's a password. This text field's a password, and so you want it to be the dots when you type them. Okay, so secure text entry will make it so it's the dots. Um, the return key, when the keyboard comes up, it has a little return, okay, and that can have a word on it like search or go, okay, or return. And you can control that with the return key type. So these are all things that you set, properties you set in your UI text field, but you're really controlling uh, the keyboard. One thing about the keyboard, it comes up on top of other views. Okay, it covers them. It comes up from the bottom, covers them. All right, that can be a problem if your text field's at the bottom because you just covered the thing you're typing in. Okay, so A, try to design your UIs so that doesn't happen. But B, you can, for example, if your view is scrollable, maybe scroll that text field up or even just move the whole view up so that while the keyboard's up, you can still see your text field that you're typing into. Okay, and so the way you find out that the keyboard's come up and how much it's covering is by tuning into this radio station UI keyboard will or did show or hide notification. It's uh, a notification sent by the window you're in. Okay, self.view.window for view controller. And the user info that you get with this radio station will tell you the rectangles of where the to keyboard appeared, and it's your responsibility to move it out of the way, okay? The only class in the kit, uh, in the uh, UI kit that will move the thing automatically for you is UI table view controller. So if you have a row in a table view uh, that's in a UI table view controller, and it's editable text, and you bring the keyboard up, it'll automatically scroll the table view. 
to move it. Okay, so that's the only thing that automatically does it. Otherwise, it's your responsibility to make move anything that get, gets obscured by the keyboard. Um, other text field properties, you can go look those up. It has a nice left and right accessory view, kind of like the annotation call out. Um, you can even add a little view to the keyboard with this input accessory view. Um, there's a lot of stuff uh, to look at in text field. I can't, I don't have time to cover it all today, but you can look it all up in UI text field documentation. All right, the last thing I'm going to talk about today before the demo is action sheet and alert. So action and sheet and alert are things that pop up on the screen to alert the user of something, obviously, or to give them kind of a branching decision. Okay, action sheet for branching decisions, alerts to alert them of something. Um, they have very, the reason I talk about them together, they have very similar APIs, in other words, programming interfaces. Um, they're used in different circumstances, though. An alert is more uh, saying something happened, pay attention, or I need a little piece of information, please give it to me right now, or I can't proceed, okay? Uh, it a little, it's a little bit like a modal view controller, except for that it can only you know, ask a simple question and get a simple answer, okay? So that's what an alert is for. Don't overuse alerts either. Just like I say don't overuse modal view controllers, don't overuse alerts, okay? Don't, every time you need a piece of information from the user, just put up an alert and ask them for it. Um, you know, it's nicer for them to be able to just click on something and start typing. Um, take, take a look, for example, at the Contacts app. Even that Contacts app where it brought up the Add Contact in the modal view controller, when it comes to adding things like text or the, uh, you know, URLs or emails, you just click right there and you just type them in. It doesn't go modal again on you just for that kind of information. So check that out to see how that can be nicely used. Um, action sheets are, they slide up from the bottom on the iPhone. They usually appear in a popover on the iPad. Uh, they are for really branching decisions. So the user wants to do something next, but they, you ne they need to tell you something so you can decide which way to go, okay? Um, so that's what action sh sheets are for. And again, they're modal. They stop everything until the person answers the question of what's in the action sheet, so make sure that's really the UI you want, uh, as opposed to just having you know, buttons in your UI that push different view controllers. That's another way to do branching decisions as well. Um, and we'll see action sheets. I'll be demoing those on Wednesday, okay? Um, all right, what's the API for these two things look like? Very similar. I'll start with action sheets first. Uh, you just alloc init it. Here's the designated initializer for action sheet. You can see that it takes a title. The action sheet has a little title at the top. Um, it has a delegate, okay? The delegate mostly will tell you what was chosen in the action sheet. Or in alert view, it'll tell you which button was chosen. Um, there are some special buttons, a cancel button, okay, which cancels the action sheet without making a decision. Destructive button, that's, you can have one button in your action sheet like that, and that will be like in red or otherwise telling the user, if you choose this, something destructive is gonna happen. This is like delete or something like that, okay? So that's what destructive button is. And then you can have as many other titles as you want. Those are all the other branches you can take besides the destructive one or cancel not doing anything. Um, you can also add buttons programmatically. If you don't want to provide them in the alloc init, you can just call add button with title um, to add them to the action sheet. And then it's time to display the action sheet. And um, you kind of do this depends on where, what context you're in. On the iPhone, you're almost always going to do show in view. Um, some, a lot of times self.view, or if you have a view that's inside your self.view, you could show from that. But it doesn't really matter on the iPhone because it's always going to slide up from the bottom. No matter how you present an action sheet on an iPhone, it's always going to slide up from the bottom. But on the iPad, since it's going to appear in a popover, it makes a lot of sense to, for example, use show from bar button item. And it'll put the popover, and the little arrow on the popover will point at that bar button item. Or even show from rect. So you specify an arbitrary